Today is a momentous day. My very first calendar's arrived. I feel like a proud parent. Now this is something that I've been building up to for a long time, but I've always been scared to take the plunge. I think I've been apprehensive that people may not have been interested in getting this calendar or that the quality wouldn't be up to my standards, but the apprehension has been blown away because the quality of this is phenomenal. I'm so, so happy with how this has turned out. Now, this video isn't a sales pitch, so I'm not gonna get bogged down in that. The technical details for this calendar are down in the description, so if you're putting together your own calendar, that might be useful. And if you're interested in actually purchasing this, you can get it just here. Now, the purpose of this video is I wanna actually look at the images, the 12 images that I chose for this calendar, and have a little bit more of a look at the story behind the images, and why they're so special to me. Each of these images were taken on the Isle of Man, which is where I live, um, and they showcase a variety of landscapes around the island. January. Now, this image was taken a few years ago, but it actually remains one of my most treasured images, and that's simply because of the story behind this image. Now, this was taken during the grip of a once in a generation um, snowstorm that gripped the island where meters and meters of snow were dumped onto the island and we were really in the grip of sub-zero temperatures for quite a while. I just happened to be in the right place at the right time with this image. I was snowed into a remote glen on the island and when I woke up in the morning um, the snow was still falling but my natural instinct as a landscape photographer was to instantly head out with my camera and try and document this incredible event. So I headed up deeper into the mountains and I went down a path that would usually take about 20 minutes to walk down. It took me about an hour and a half because the snow was so unbelievably deep. When I got into Glen Dew where this was taken, which is the kind of the, the top of the, um, the valley, there were really conditions which I would not expect to see on the Isle of Man. We had blizzards whipping in, very, very deep snow, such bitterly cold temperatures. It really felt like I'd been transported to another world. And I think with this image, it's the scarcity of this image that makes it so special. I genuinely believe that in my photography career, I may never get the opportunity to shoot conditions quite like this. This is potentially a once in a lifetime shot. February. Now, this image was taken on my second ever vlog video, which you can find linked at the top now. It's probably one of my favorite images from 2018. And on this particular cold winter's day, I set off to Mackled, which sits quite close to where I live. And the island on this day had been shrouded in this beautiful sea mist over the Irish Sea. And it was kind of rolling in from the sea over the land every now and then. Uh, kind of very much ebbing and flowing. It was utterly mesmerizing to watch. And for this particular shot, I got up to a high vantage point that would take me above this sea mist and I looked down over this part of the island and I simply popped this church and graveyard in the foreground to give a little bit of a spooky feel to it. And I simply just waited for the mist to kind of roll in over the land and it worked out absolutely perfectly. It was very much one of these days where I didn't really have to do all that much. The conditions kind of did the work for me. March. Now, this picture was taken on one of my favorite vlog videos to date, which you can find linked to at the top now. This was taken at a place called Craig Moor, which is a group of ruins which sit deep in woodlands up in the mountains of the Isle of Man, very much off the beaten track, very hidden away and quite a secretive place that I didn't know existed until I did a lot of research. Half the fun was actually just finding it, but um, when I eventually did get there and I did find it, I was absolutely blown away by it. It was so, like stepping back in time, so photogenic. And this particular shot really caught my eye. This little ruin sat on the boundary between the, the dark sort of forest and the light kind of mountain open moorland that sit, sits behind. And it was really nicely illuminated in from the right hand side here. It just perfectly lit up the scene. 
For me, it was an absolutely beautiful image that I really didn't expect to capture at all. April, and this sees me venture into the world of astrophotography, and this happens to be the front cover image of the calendar too. Now, this is taken at my favorite little lighthouse, Winky Lighthouse, which sits up at the most gnarly point of the Isle of Man. And for this image, I captured star trail movement. Um, I went with, for simplicity with this image, basically. I placed the lighthouse, bang, center in the middle of the image, and I placed North Star, the Pole Star, right above the lighthouse. And this ensured that when I captured the movement of the stars, which I did through multiple different exposures, they almost appeared to circle round the lighthouse. And what makes this image particularly enjoyable for me is the fact that I had about three or four failed attempts at getting this image on separate different trips out to the, the lighthouse. A combination of bad weather, um, poor preparation, equipment letting me down, really did frustrate the living hell out of me, but I eventually persevered and got the image. May. Now, I was in two minds about this image because bluebells are a little bit cliche almost for spring, but in the end, I went with the bluebells. Um, this particular shot I took in a place called Balaglass, um, and I took this when I was testing out my uh, Tamron G2 lens, and you can find the video for that up top now. This was a really beautiful scene, and for this shot, I wanted to try and capture old and new, life and death in one picture. So in the foreground here, we've got an old broken tree trunk that kind of is scattered across the actual forest floor. And then the burst of new life, that new spring growth, kind of growing all around it. So you've got ferns and you've got bluebells, kind of almost overwhelming it. That's the combination that I wanted to convey for this. And I think it's absolutely perfect for a spring image. June. Now, this image was taken around the summer solstice, which produces absolutely incredible, beautiful twilight conditions that almost last the entirety of the night up here at the high latitudes that I live. And this is an interesting story with this image. I, I, I kind of cheated with this image. See this little stone just down here? I may have put that into the shot. <laughs> Um, what the image really needed was something to anchor the foreground. There wasn't very much to work with on the beach. I wanted to go for a minimalist kind of feel to the shot. So I very much felt that it needed this rock here. So I kind of popped that into the foreground and um, it kind of made the shot for me. These conditions are absolutely beautiful. This burning orange twilight on the horizon. It almost lasts the entirety of the night. And this image was, I think it was taken about 11 p.m., which just shows you just how incredible the conditions are in that midsummer period. July, and this is probably my favorite image in the entire calendar, and maybe one of my favorite from the last year. This was taken on my first wild camping vlog, which you can find a link to at the top now. It was thoroughly enjoyable and I was absolutely chuffed with the results. This was taken at a place called Kronknieri La, which is a mountain which sits close to the coast in the southwest corner of the island. And I pitched my tent close up to the summit. And I woke up early in the morning and took this image at about 4.30. What made it particularly special was, was this dense covering of cotton grass, which was covering most of the actual mountain. It was quite surreal, it almost looked like snow. I'd never seen anything quite like it. And for this particular image, I focused in for the background as the sun rose over the heart of the island. And what made it particularly special is there was just this absolutely beautiful, delicate covering of mist that kind of 
blanketed the whole landscape. It was just absolutely amazing. And then the foreground, the, the cotton grass just gently kind of swayed in the summer breeze. It was one of those pictures which will stay with me for a very, very long time. August sees me venture back into the world of astrophotography, but this time I haven't taken star trails. This image really focused on the heart of the Milky Way galaxy. So this picture was taken down on a place called Langness Peninsula, and there's a little bit of land that juts out from that called Fort Island, and it's got this beautiful old fort. So that was my foreground interest for the shot. And it was absolutely crystal clear this night. There wasn't any cloud to be seen anywhere. It was perfectly still, very little light pollution. It was absolutely ideal for this shot. So I simply positioned the heart of the Milky Way, which you can see down here on the right side of the image, and that kind of arced up through the middle of the shot, and it just worked out perfectly, and it's probably one of my favorite astro shots from the last few years. September. Now, the number one comment I get when people look at this image is, is it photoshopped? Is that real? This is 100% real. I took this a few years ago and to this day it remains one of the most remarkable experiences I've ever had in photography. The northern lights from the Isle of Man are seen a handful of times a year. I haven't seen them in quite a while now, but I went through a period a few years ago where I saw them quite regularly. From a pho photography point of view, to get shots like this, you need very, very strong showing of the Northern Lights. And in my experience, I've only ever seen showings this strong once or twice in the last five to six years. So it's, it's pretty rare and I was absolutely blown away by this particular showing. I took this on the west coast of the island, looking up towards the north. I positioned this beach defence down along my foreground to kind of anchor the shot and give that much needed foreground interest. And this was by far the best showing that I've ever, ever seen here. October and this is the very first image that I took with my Nikon D850. There's something about it and I, I can't quite put my finger on it but I think it's the balance and the composition. You've got a really interesting background with these clouds, these fluffy clouds moving through the, the deep blue sky. You've got this beautiful lighthouse perched up on these cliffs. This is Mackled Head itself here. And then the foreground here, this beautiful clear pool of water. There's a lot of interest throughout this shot. And on this particular day, showers were kind of whipping in from the sea. Um, so it was very turbulent weather. One moment it was sunny and the next it was absolutely raining. So, so heavy. So with this shot, I went for a long exposure just to clean up the shot and just make that middle ground that little bit more simple. November and I'm quite proud of this shot and the reason for that is I don't think anyone's taken this shot before I think I truly pioneered new ground with this shot and that's ultimately what landscape photography is about the reason for that is it's downright dangerous to get this shot and I've never been back to get it since to, to try and get another take on this shot I think this might be a, a one-time trip only it's precarious to reach. It sits on the west coast of the island where we've got steep dramatic uh, mountains and hills that clash with the sea. Very, very steep. And this particular waterfall is perched right on a cliff edge, so, so hidden away. And it was only through studying maps and looking at um, the flow of this particular river that I had an inclination that this may be in this location. And I was rewarded with this. It was absolutely spectacular.
and finally December. Now this image holds a lot of sentimental value for me and that's simply because it was taken on my very first vlog trip which is a little bit painful and cringy to look at now. I hope I've got a little bit better but uh, you judge for yourself, it's up there now. Um, for this shot, the island had been dusted in a brand new covering of fresh snow. So I hiked up into the mountains to um, North Barul, which is the second highest summit on the island. And this ruin is called Park Llewellyn and actually sits up high on the slopes of North Barul. Quite hidden away, um, it's... Um, yeah, I think a lot of photographers overlook this location, but it's absolutely knockout as far as I'm concerned. And I think what makes this room particularly photogenic is the beautiful triangular gable of the building. It's so eye-catching. With this particular shot, I had wonderful soft winter light streaming in through the backdrop, and it just produced amazing light and contrast throughout the shot. That brings me to the end of this video and my little review of the images that I've selected for my 2019 calendar. I hope this has been insightful for you and useful, and particularly if you're putting together your own calendar. I personally feel like the process of choosing images is way harder than actually making the calendar itself. So I know how hard that can be. If you're actually interested in buying the calendar, you can find it here. And I'll also pop some info down in the description. I'd be very grateful for any orders purchased. I don't have very many of the calendars though. I didn't really place a very big order because frankly, I didn't know how they'd go down or what they would be like. Um, so yeah, they are limited edition. And I'm also offering them at quite a competitive price. I am not um, charging very much for them at all. My priority is to get my images out there and in front of eyeballs not make money. If you've got any actual insights or thoughts on calendar production yourself, um, pop your comments below. I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. I've never done it before, so I'm very much an amateur at this. Um, it would be really interesting to hear from more experienced minds on this uh, topic. I'll see you all soon. Goodbye.